everyone. We want to take this time to welcome our internet audience with a loud round of applause. God is an on-time guy, right? Amen. Well, God has been on time with us all these years oh, yeah. uh, by giving us a great teacher uh, and Dr. Ray Higgins. We're happy that he's here with us uh, today, sure. and uh, we look forward to hearing from him. Having said that, we're going to continue on, and we're going to welcome our young and vibrant elder that's going to come and speak with us this morning as she is making her way up here. I'm going to ask that we will put our hands together for none other than Elder Yay. Yoder. Uh, what? Matt right? Doris Mackler. I always want to call him Mildred Matt But it's actually Doris Mackler. So go on and put our hands together. cannot 
say to yourself or to anybody else, I do not know what my purpose is and what direction I should choose. In the Piscean age, we could hide in our heads and say the mystery of who I am is buried with deep within me, and it is, but you must seize every opportunity, an opportunity and experiences may not always be of your liking, but you seize the opportunities to outpicture to yourself, mm -hmm. show yourself who you are, because you have been given the vision of who you are. Uh, Everyone has. Yeah. Sometimes children come in the world and they tell us exactly mm -hmm. who they think they are, uh -huh. and that's the truest aspect of themselves. Yes. Now, as they experience themselves and they are outpictured, it's like, um, are you still that same entity? Are you the essence of who you think you are? Mm -hmm. However, as we advance to another era, up at the Aquarian age, we don't have to be all in our heads because the information is there. Yeah. Um, as a point of reference, sometimes when you meet people, you don't always know that they, they Google you. Mm -hmm. They go to the electronic database <laughs> to find out who you are out there. All right. So, you know, there's this hologram that stand side by side of your physical essence and who you have created out there. <clears throat> and it's, I remember working uh, for a short time at a firm which handled oil and gas people in terms of the various kind of involvements that they could get into and if there was a case that someone brought to their attention, mm -hmm. and they wanted to predict the probability of successful outcome. The first thing that they would do was to ask a particular team in the office to start the character analysis of that person. And the character analysis back then was, we had access to the person's credit card, and access to bank account information. Yeah. And we would put together a character analysis based on the person's spending pattern mm -hmm. and their bills mm -hmm. and their medical information. Yeah. And based on that, they decided, doesn't matter what the case was about, we decided whether or not they were going to take this case based on that information. So, although it might have been 30 years ago, there was always a fingerprint, a footprint, out there as to who you were, aside from the person who walked into the office uh, and asked for assistance or for information in anything. And now we know, we are very sure, that when you go to apply for certain jobs, you can apply for them. But before they make any kind of decisions, um, whether it's a sensitive job, whether, and especially if it's a high paying job, high visibility job, they are going to, quote, vet your character. They want to see what's out there. So, you know, there's the fingerprint. Young people uh, didn't realize for a long time in terms of going to school, making applications to colleges and other kind of post-secondary programs. Mm -hmm. Before they became um, eligible for financial aid, again, they 
ran what was on Facebook, what was on their social media um, accounts. And they decided that either this person is or is not going to get the full aid or get into this institution. <laughs> Your social interactions, um, you know, when you go out and use your credit card, you know, whether it be to your, um, what you do they, those after job, or after the day celebration, your, your happy hour, <laughs> um, or your, you know, your post dinner, your post anything, whenever you swipe that credit card, you left information for whoever wants to find out about your social habits. Um, your affiliations, when we are pigeonholing people and we want to know something about what they do, who they associate with, we look at their associations. We look at their zip codes. We look at their email. Yeah. And and you know for your car insurance, they look at your credit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is your mortgage insurance. They look at your credit. Mm -hmm. And they look at your medical records. Now you don't let anybody tell you that your medical record is so private. <laughs> Nobody looks at it. You are going to apply for insurance, health insurance. You're going to apply for other things that has to do with your physical health. If they are going to, to lend you a lot of money, they want to know actuarially whether or not you are a good risk. Right. So as you look at the end of the year and make your assessments in terms of who you are, who you want to be going forward, and anything else that you do. And then the other thing like you shopping online, you know that when you shop online, they send you stuff based on your shopping habits. Yes. So, Take all of these things into consideration. Know that there is a hologram that says it's your electronic you, and then this other person that says that you know you are something else. And then, like I said, whenever you want to find out what parents are, you always ask their children. All of this is you. All of this is you. Yeah. So take every opportunity. Seize those tools, experiences, and your knowledge base yes. to become a fuller, wholer person uh -huh. as you transgress the universe. Uh,
And that is going to be by the way of our song word, uh, Minister Alice Wilson. She's going to come and she is going to deliver uh, a song for us this morning. And so I'm going to ask if you will stand to your feet. Let's give her the energy that God will give those folks for us the ability to do what they need to do in order to reach us. We may not Someone may not get something out of whatever happened this week, but you know, sometimes a song is what someone needs. Is that right? Right. Okay, so this morning, she's going to deliver what God has for her to deliver to us. Let's put our hands together. Thank you. 
promise you, it's for a reason. There's a lesson that has to come out of it. It's a lesson in it all. It's not by chance. It's not by circumstance. It's really for the creator to do something special in your life for you to get to the next level. Whatever the next level may be. So sometimes we get comfortable and we get complacent because we know what we know what we know. But when God takes you through something that you've never been through, you say, oh my, I ain't never been through nothing like that before. I don't know how to handle that thing. So that's why I say, I'm stronger. Yeah. I'm wiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm better. Better, better, better. So much better. So much better. When I'm looking on. Sunday morning on the radio. 
And when we went off the radio, then several people came to the village saying, I miss you on the radio, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I started to say, if I had known going off there, I was going to get you here. <laughs> I would have gone off sooner, <laughs> you know? Yeah, buddy. Listen, before getting into the message today, I'd like to say thank you to those of you who made it yesterday for our annual business meeting. Thank you for uh, making some of you today until we you forgot, actually forgot about it. It's okay. Uh, we handled the business at hand. And uh, we're moving forward, getting ready to go to higher heights, as they used to say in the church. As they probably still say it. I just haven't heard it in a while. Higher heights, and anybody know the rest of that phrase? Deeper depths. Right, who said that? Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, higher heights and deeper depths and wider widths, whatever that means. But nonetheless, we give praise to God for being so merciful in our life. To those who are visiting with us today, thank you for being with us here today at the African Village. And I pray that while you're here, you will dine sufficiently. Um, this is what, 42 years for me in ministry now, almost, almost 43. This March will be 43 years in ministry. And um, one of the things that I've always tried to do, especially since uh, serving in a pastoral capacity, is to make sure that my ministry is like a restaurant. I don't know how many of you guys have been to a good restaurant, but how many of you have ever gone to a restaurant and then you went back to that restaurant? Mm -hmm. Huh? Why did y'all go back? Because the food was good, right? Those where the food wasn't good, you ain't go back to this no more, right? You said, no, I ain't spending my money here. Nope, not again. You know, and so if the food is good and you know you're going to dine sufficiently, then you'll come back again. And that's really the psychology that I have operated under. There's a lot going on. Um, you know, I, I don't know if the world is worse or if I'm just at an age where it seems like it's worse. Because I used to hear, uh, thank you, I'm glad you did that, but I forgot to turn this on. I used to hear my parents say things like, uh, oh, the world is going, you know, if the Lord don't hurry to come back, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be, we don't know what we're going to do, we might not make it to next week and all, and I heard that as a child. So to that generation, the world was as worse as it could be yeah. when I was a child. You follow me? But now that I am their age, okay, I'm, I'm the age that they were, I'm going to look back older than I, they were when they were saying it, um, I'm looking at all the stuff that's going on in our society, and I'm looking at all of the things that I tried to say was coming since I've been here. Think back with me. Y'all remember me teaching on the King Alfred plan? Right. Yeah. Rex 84. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Uh, do you remember me teaching on Ordo at Tail? Right. Yeah. Order out of crisis. Uh -huh. You know, um, I'm looking at what is going <coughs> on in, in, in our society, and I have to be honest with y'all. I believe, I take that back, intuitively I know that the powers that be are trying to usher us into a cataclysmic event. And if you're not prepared for it, you're going to be caught up in it and powerless and not knowing how to handle it. I've tried to prepare you with the information necessary to file the proper paperwork to remove yourself from being a ward of the state. Y'all remember that? Yeah. To empower yourself so that you're not under their rule. And sometimes I wonder if we're really listening. Because it's coming, man. 
It's interesting because uh, I, I, I got this addiction to zombie movies. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse, The Walking Dead. And even though it's a fictionalized version of the condition of our people, see, that's how I see it. Okay, I, I look at it, The Walking Dead. Think about that. The Walking Dead. Okay? Uh, when I go to the gun range, well, I, I went to the gun range, I can't remember which one it was now, and they had top targets of zombies. Yeah. And so I said to the guy behind the counter, I said, y'all got zombie targets? And he said, yeah, man, because they're coming. <laughs> and I said, no, get out of here. He said, no, man, seriously, they're coming. You know, and then he said, you don't believe me? Go to the CDC website. Yeah. CDC is Centers for Disease Control. Now, the CDC, if you can, don't, have, don't have to take my word for it. Those of you, and by the way, those of you who are watching this by way of internet, I'm going to ask you to do, do this right now. If your device will allow you, okay, diminish the window that you are, or you just create a second window that you can go back and forth between, okay, and have a second window to pull up the references that I'm going to share with you guys today. Okay, so you can see for yourself what I'm saying. You can actually read along with me. Uh, so try to open a second browser window and be prepared to do that. But if you do that now, on that other browser window, just Google the zombie apocalypse, the Centers for Disease Control. You know, now of course, they're telling you about the zombies is coming from a <coughs> crisis preparation perspective. You see it already? Uh -huh. Yeah, from the Centers for Disease Control. I mean, they're actually telling you because see, they know about all of the chemical experiments that have been have been deployed on the human race because they deploy them. You follow what I'm saying? So we need to prepare ourselves. You know, the first place you got to start preparing yourself is up here, in your mind. We go into this thing, see, we, we, we came from a church, most of us came from a church background where we were taught that we don't have to worry about this stuff because the Lord is going to come take us out of here before all that happens. Okay? Well, like I said, I wasn't supposed to be ever become a parent or a grandparent, and in a few years I'll probably be a great grandparent. <laughs> and I was six years old when I first heard and found it in my head, he's on his way back. Y'all yeah. get what I'm saying? Okay, before I go any further, do this. Everybody say the space inside this circle. Represents my realm of knowledge. All that I think I know about whatever I think I know is represented right here inside this circle. I must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is within the circumference of my awareness. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to share some stuff with y'all today. I'm telling you now that you did not know was already in place. Looking at the crisis that's happening in our, in our society, here you have people, and, and they still haven't told us yet why this so-called Muslim couple slaughtered or shot and killed 16 people. Isn't it amazing? Now follow this. Follow, and I want y'all to see this. The front page of the New York Post said Muslim murderers. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. And big, big letters. Yeah. But when this white Christian boy walked into a church in Charleston, South Carolina, they did not put on the front page White Christian kills nine people. 
when Timothy McVeigh, a white Christian boy, oh, yeah. destroyed the building in Oklahoma. They didn't say a Christian boy bombs building and kills hundreds of people. Yeah. So you got to learn. Everybody say this. I have to learn, have to learn how, to how to see the reality behind the appearance. Start learning how to see, family. Yes. They're trying to prepare you to engage in a battle that they have designed. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a media junkie, mm. if you are a media controlled baby, then that means that everything that CNN puts out there, you won't fall for it. Because the media understands that if your eyes see it and your ears hear it, your brain is going to believe it. So please, if y'all have not seen this movie, make note of it. Make note of it. It's, you can go to Netflix and get it. Get the movie Wag the Dog. How many of you have not seen Wag the Dog? Okay. Somebody said they got it. Yes. Get the movie. Watch the movie Wag the Dog so you can see how the powers that be literally control the thinking of the masses. Uh -huh. Now this is, a, this is a strategy that's been going on for a while. Yes. Okay? So the, the subject I want to talk to y'all today from is this. Repeat after me. We must destroy, we must destroy what's destroying us. What's destroying us. Okay, we must destroy what's destroying us or we are not going to survive. Uh, There's this agenda that was documented by some very powerful people several hundred years ago. This agenda is called the Protocols of Zion. Those of you who are watching me by way of internet, go to that second browser window and Google Protocols of the Wise Elders of Zion. Or just, if you type in Protocols, the rest of it will probably jump up for you. Protocols is spelled P-R-O-T-O-C-O-L-S. Now, family, do I have time to just take my time and teach today? Yes. Okay, I want, I want you to understand something. This message today is not designed to emotionalize you and make you feel good. I got out of that anesthetizing ministry years ago. I'm not here to anesthetize you. I'm not here to make you feel good. And, and, I'm not here to do that. Those days are gone. <laughs> and the reason why those days are gone is because that is also an agenda to keep you asleep. Yes. You see, and as long as you're asleep, you don't know what's going on. And we have a lot of people who love dreaming. That's why they like to sleep. And then they'll tell you, keep the dream alive. Well, the only way you can keep a dream alive is to stay asleep. Because the moment you wake up, I don't know how many of y'all have ever been in a dream and you were having a good time in that dream, and all of a sudden you woke up. What did you want to do? You wanted to go back to that dream. You tried to go back to sleep and check, get back into that dream. But see, the moment you wake up, the dreaming stops. So, I want to share with you today just some excerpts from this agenda. It's deep because I had a brother say to me one day, the Bible has to be the word of God. <laughs> and I said, why does the Bible have to be the word of God? He said, because the things that the Bible talks about are coming to pass. And I said to him, you don't know the difference between prophecy and long-term planning. Uh, yeah. wow. Wow. And you know what he said? He said, he says, what you say? Uh, Isn't that deep when you make a clear statement? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, a common sense statement, but it, 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 they go through so much cognitive dissonance when you say it that they have to say, so what you say? <laughs> so I said it again. You don't know the difference between prophecy and long-term planning. See, those who are ignorant call what the planners have put in place prophecy. Did y'all get what I just said? I'll say it again. Those who are ignorant call what the planners have put in place prophecy. They call it prophecy. And then when the descendants for the future generations of those power elites carry out the plans of their forefathers, the ignorant call that prophecy being fulfilled. Are y'all grabbing what I'm saying? So we need to understand, brothers and sisters, see, see, and it's hard for us to understand, it's hard for us to grab that a people could sit down and develop a strategy with long-term plans for world domination. We just can't grab that. And you know why we can't grab it? Because we don't have a plan. You see, people who don't plan can't understand or respect others who do plan. <laughs> so I want to share with y'all what the ignorant referred to as prophecy. If you are looking at the protocols of Zion on your, and those of you who are here, you can feel free to pull it up on your smartphones as well, okay? Just Google it. See, I love it when y'all follow along with me so you see I'm not making this stuff up. Yeah. Some of this stuff you can't make it up. Right. The protocols of Zion, there are actually 27 protocols. And each protocol consists of several points or articles in it. Yeah. Okay? So the actual entire collection of the minutes of these wise elders of Zion, and they call themselves the wise elders of Zion. Uh -huh. These are Jewish uh -huh. leaders. Yeah. Grab what I just said. Jewish leaders. Uh -huh. let, me, let me say this before I go any further, before I forget this. This week, I, I just don't understand how they even brought themselves to do that, but a, a group of black pastors Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. But not from met with I, I'm going to just say his name out of Donald Trump. I'm trying to find a description for him, but I, I just, I'm inadequate right now to adequately describe him as I would like to. But what got me is a group of black pastors met with him. For what? <laughs> But again, it goes to show how easily we are distracted. Yes. Yes. Now follow what I'm saying, family. The people who run things don't run for office. So whoever sits in the White House, understand, they are simply a pawn in this international game of chess. As, as, as McCoy said in the movie uh, Training Day, this is chess, not checkers. <laughs> and if you don't understand how to play chess, you're not going to understand the strategies that's being implemented in our society. That's why when Brother Brady started the chess program here, I'm so excited about that because the game teaches you strategy and how strategy works. You see, family, in order for us to navigate through this mess, we're going to have to come up with a strategy. But that strategy begins with right knowledge. That's the first step. So the subject today is we must destroy what's destroying us. But you can't destroy your enemy until you first learn how to recognize your enemy. We are too busy wasting too much time looking at each other as the enemy. I had somebody say something to me the other day, and
And I said, brother, before you go any further, I only have one enemy. I think I said it here a couple weeks ago. I only have one enemy, and that's racism. Cultural supremacy. Any program that would try to diminish the reality of our potential is my enemy. Yes, sir. Yes. Am I making sense, people? Yes, sir. A lot of sense. Protocol number three. Now, I told you the 27 protocols. Those of you who are watching, go to protocol number three. Okay? Now, under protocol number three, you'll see other numbered protocols or paragraphs or commentaries on each protocol. So I want you to go to protocol number 3.9. Now, again, if you're following me here with your smartphone, please feel free to do so. But allow me to take my time because I want y'all to follow with me. Okay? Now, if you don't have a device to follow along, then please listen carefully because when I read the stuff that these folks wrote, you're going to say, how dare they? <laughs> Protocol number three is entitled, Our Methods of Conquest. Did y'all hear what I just said? That one protocol is a description of their strategy for world conquest. And again, it's hard for us to understand that because we have been, our minds have been shaped to think God ain't going to let that happen to us. <laughs> no, I just don't believe that God would let that happen. And that's why we're in the condition we're in. Yes, sir. You see, all they have to do is give us a lie and teach us to believe it. Yeah. Right. And once you believe they're alive. You're lost. Until God sends a teacher to set your mind free from believing the lie. Yes. Under their methods of conquest and protocol number three, item number nine, here's what they wrote in their minutes, in their strategy, in their plans, in their agenda. When the hour strikes for our sovereign Lord of all the world to be crowned. Now I want y'all to know they're not, not talking about Jesus. These are Jews here that wrote this. Okay, so you need to think and ask yourself who are they considering to be their sovereign Lord and that they are going to crown? It goes on to say, when the hour strikes for our sovereign Lord of all the world to be crowned, it is the same hands which will sweep away everything that might be a hindrance thereto. Does anybody see what I'm reading? Yes. You, do you see it, brother? Okay, so I want y'all to see I'm not making this up. Now notice what they said. When the time, I'm going to transliterate it now. When the time comes, that's what they mean when they say when the hour strikes. And y'all, if you look around, you see it's getting to that point. All of the crisis creation is taking place. It's setting the stage for their plan to be put in place. And we've been taught to call it the Great Tribulation. Y'all yeah, yeah. grabbing this? And because we've been taught to call it the Great Tribulation, we've been taught we're going to be raptured. Out of here. Before all this takes place. That's why you need to believe on the Lord. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you be delivered from this tragedy. They gave you a fictitious figure to put your hope in. 
So you will nest attack. There's nothing as bad as self-intoxication. It's one thing to be anesthetized by somebody else, but when I can give you a program that you can go anytime you get ready and intoxicate yourself. <laughs> Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. And that's what we have done. That's what we do. The masses of our people. <laughs> They're saying, when the time comes, for the person that we have chosen to be the world leader. It is these same hands that will sweep away everything that will hinder our agenda. That's just one statement. And just from that one statement alone, that alone should get us to the point of saying, we need to get ourselves together. Yes. Yes. It goes on to say, the goyim. Y'all see the word there? Yes. The goyim. Now, for those of you who don't know what the goyim is, don't take my word for what I'm saying. <coughs> Look up the word Gentiles in your Bible and go to Strong's Concordance and see what the root word or the etymological term is for the word Gentiles. You see, it comes from the word Goyim. So what they're saying is, Everybody that's not a part of who we are. <coughs> Those people not, who are not our people. Now mind you, again, this is written by Jewish people. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The bankers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the people who have guns oh, right, right. instead of butter. Y'all ever hear that phrase before? Guns of butter? See, we, we get attracted to butter. Okay? Guns, what they mean by that is those things that give you power. Real estate. Controlling politics. Decision makers. These people have guns, and I don't mean the kind you shoot, I mean power. They taught us to love butter. Butter is bling bling. 22 inch rims. With an old car. When your rims cost more than your car, you a doctor's as hell. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. The, way, the, the way you wear your clothes, that's butter. Yeah. You know, who can, who can look the best? That's butter. No, that, there's no power in none of that. And they've taught the goyim. Another term they use for the goyim is people who are equivalent to cattle. The goy, notice what it goes on to say. The goyim have lost the habit of thinking. Oh, got it? We have lost the habit of thinking. Did y'all catch that? I just read the first few words in that next paragraph. That's not the whole sentence. But they're letting you know that the people who we have tricked yeah. don't even think anymore. They don't even use the skills that God innately put into them, which are simple, critical thinking faculties. They're saying that the people that we have tricked don't even think anymore. Check this out. It says they have lost the habit of thinking unless by the suggestions 
of our specialists. Yeah. Am I making this up, y'all? Yeah. You see right there? So they're letting you know that they have social engineers that literally design how and what we should think about. Because we've lost the habit of thinking unless we're prompted to think about what their specialists want us to think about and they usually use the media to do it. Yes, sir. It goes on to say, therefore, they do not see the urgent necessity of what we, when our kingdom comes, shall adopt all at once, namely this, that it is essential, listen to this people, they're saying, it is essential to teach in national schools yeah. one simple, true piece of knowledge, the basis of all knowledge, the knowledge of the structure of human life, of social existence, which requires division and labor, yeah. and consequently the division of men into classes and conditions. So do y'all see how they have structured society? Yes. It goes on to say, it is essential for all to know that owing to difference in the objects of human activity, there cannot be any equality. Because they have structured it to where there can be no equality. So this whole lie of all men are created equal. That might be, but we're not living equal. We might have been created equal, but their agenda is not going to allow for equality. It goes on to say that he who by any act of his compromises, a whole class cannot be equally responsible before the law with him who affects no one but only his own honor. The true knowledge, and I'm just reading their minutes here, the true knowledge of the structure of society <clears throat> has, has, has it sunk in yet, y'all? Has it sunk in that we are living in a society that has been structured by the power elite? If y'all remember, I did a, I'm trying to, you know, I, I think back on the messages, man. I, I did a message, and I, I y'all remember this? I did a message that someone has to be at the bottom. Yes. Yes. And then the rest I said, is, I said, so it might as well be you. Y'all yeah. remember when I did that message? Yes, I'm trying to let you know, man, that they have structured a society. They, they created a structure, and unless you know how to identify the, the strategy of your enemy, you're going to be at the bottom yes. of that structure. And once they see that you are at the bottom of that structure, it is no problem whatsoever yes. for 10 or 15 cops to see a black man holding a knife, doing nothing with it but the knife in his hand, and they decide to open fire on him all at once. Right. You know why? Because you are at the bottom of the structure of society in their mind. Yes, sir. Yes. the true knowledge of the structure of society into the secrets of which we do not admit the goyim. Did y'all hear that? In other words, their structure, there's no place for who they consider the Gentiles or the lower class people of society. There's no place in their structure for us. And we're walking around 
to a black power. Everybody repeat after me. Until you have the power to define. Until you have the power to define. Until you have the power to feed yourself. Until you have the power to feed yourself. Clothe yourself. Clothe yourself. Educate yourself. House yourself. Meditate yourself. And defend yourself. You don't have power. I don't care how much you holler black power. Isn't it deep that the people in power don't holler white power? <laughs> or Jewish power? They don't, they, they don't holler that kind of stuff. There's something about the, psych, the psychiatry of us that when we say a thing, we think that makes it real. So we, we, we anesthetize ourselves with, with telling ourselves that we are, we are great. We came from kings. We came from princes. We came from, you know. Thank you, brother. Not all of us did. I mean, come on. Everybody can't be a king. Everybody can't be a queen. I mean, think with me. In a, in a, in a, in a kingdom, there's one king. And he has a queen. Everybody else in that kingdom are subjects. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. So the true knowledge of the structure of society and to the secrets of which we do not admit the goyim would demonstrate to all men, check this out now, that the positions and work must be kept within a certain circle. And they may not become a source of human suffering arising from an education, an education which does not correspond with the work which the individuals are called upon to do. Yeah. An education that does not correspond with the work that you're called upon to do. An education that does not correspond with the work that you are called upon to do. Did y'all get it? There's nothing more frustrating, man. I mean, I'm looking at it, I see it. I mean, you'd be surprised how many of our young people are coming out of college with degrees because they were taught to get a good education and can't get a job. In fact, we live in a society, keeping it real, that a white person with a high school diploma <laughs> stands a better chance of getting a job than a black person with a master's degree. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, we got, we got to come to grips with reality here. After a thorough study of this knowledge, the peoples will volunteer. Grab this. Hear this. Hear their strategy. After a thorough study of this knowledge, the peoples will voluntarily submit to authority and accept such position as is appointed them in the state. In the present state of knowledge and direction that we have given to its development and people, Blindly believing in things in print. Yeah. Hold up. I ain't got to to hold up to you. Blind, remember y'all, how many of y'all remember this phrase? I said it time and time again. He who controls the printed page controls the thinking of the age. They taught us to believe what they put in print. I'll be honest, right? This was written hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Cherishes, thanks to promptings intended, hear this, y'all, thanks to promptings intended to mislead. Y'all get that? Their agenda, the intention behind their agenda is to mislead us. Yeah. And to its own ignorance, a blind hatred towards all conditions 
reasons which it considers above itself, for it has no understanding. It has no understanding, or the goyim, or the people, have no understanding of the meaning of class and conditions. Okay. So we walk around looking good. It can't nobody dress better than us. No. That's just that one article in protocol number three. Yeah. Let's look at another protocol. Let's look at protocol number five. Now, this protocol is their strategy for despotism and progress. And in protocol number five, we're going to look at point number 11. Now, like I said, each protocol has a whole lot of points under it. So y'all, make this your homework assignment to just read the entire 27 protocol of Zion and see for yourself that what they predicted is coming to pass in our society today. And then ask me or tell me if the protocols of Zion is the word of God. Okay. Protocol number five, despotism and modern progress. <coughs> Item number 11. Notice their agenda. The second secret requisite. What how, what? how many numbers? The second one. We ain't talking about the first secret requisite. The second secret requisite for the success of our government is compromised. Is com I'm sorry. It's comprised in the following. Here it is. To multiply to such an extent national failing. Habits, passions, conditions of civil life that will be impossible for anyone to know where he is in the resulting chaos. So that the people in consequence will fail to understand one another. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. It goes on to say, this measure will also serve us in another way. Namely, to sow discord mm -hmm. in all parties. All right. yeah. To dislocate all collective forces which are still unwilling to submit to us. And to discourage any kind, hear this y'all, and, and to discourage any kind of personal initiative which might in any degree hinder our affair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all see what I'm trying to say here. I hope y'all see that they, their strategy has been so well put in place that we don't even realize it's in place. Yeah. We're talking about the devil. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. We're talking about our folk are talking about Satan's show is busy. Yeah. We, our people have been fooled into thinking Satan is the God of this world. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you need to ask yourself is, who is Satan? You need to ask yourself, what does Satan look like? Because in the minds of our people, he's red. Yeah. <laughs> with a tail with a point on the end of it, with a trident and flame following with black demons. Black demons, that's his army. See, that's what we've been taught. Okay? No, oh, man. We're talking about a system that's been put in place. An evil system that's designed to keep you powerless. Yes, Write this down, family, please. Write this down. The best way to counter a conspiracy is to expose it. Yes, sir. The best way to counter a conspiracy is to expose it. That's my assignment. That's my job, to, to help open your eyes 
to the conspiracy for our powerlessness. Because until I can get you to see the, the, the design for our powerlessness, you are going to keep operating thinking you're operating in power. And until you see the design so that you can begin to address the design, you're going to keep playing the game they want you to play. And it goes on to say here, again, check this out, man, that their, their design is to discourage any kind of personal initiative, not collective initiative, personal initiative. Because, see, there can be no collective to, uh, initiative. Initiative is personal, y'all. That's why Dr. Malefi Asante stressed the importance of collective consciousness. Yeah. He stresses that because if we have collective consciousness, meaning, in other words, if I can awaken you, each one of you, so that you see the device and the strategy and the design to eliminate us, then you will do what you need to do to rescue yourself from that program. And once each one of you begin to rescue yourself from that program, it will look like we have collective activity. Because we're all on the same page. We're all on the same path. We're all looking at the same enemy. We all, am I making sense? But trust me, I'm not trying to get us to do this as a group. You know why? I've learned from history. Because they'll find out who's leading this group. Okay, and then they get rid of the leader because they know the group ain't got no sense. Am I making sense? See, that's what, see, groups look for leaders. Individuals look for teachers. Oh, no, I like that. I like it too, all right? Please, somebody make note of that and give it to me after I can have it put on a shirt. Groups look for leaders. Individuals look for teachers. There's nothing more dangerous. Now, this is what they wrote in their minutes. They said that there's nothing more dangerous than personal initiative. They know, they know that black man, black woman, if you ever develop personal initiative, you will become a weapon. They taught me in the Marines Corps, and I got Marines in here to bear witness. They taught us that the most deadly thing on this planet is a Marine and his rifle. And that what he taught his brothers? Yes, but I got news for you. The most powerful force to contend with is a black man, and especially the black woman, uh -oh. who has awakened to the point where yes. they have personal initiative. Yes, That's why they put programs in place to be sure that our children yes. Yes. go straight from school to jail. Yes. Because if our young people end up with a record, they have this wall in front of them to interfere with their initiative. Now, even with that wall, you can still surmount it. There's nothing more dangerous than personal initiative. It goes on to say, if it has genius behind it. Y'all see this? Yeah. Who else is looking at it on their phone? You see it, brother? Yes, thank you. There's nothing more dangerous than personal initiative if it has genius behind it. Such initiative can do more. Hear this. Personal initiative. One person. This is what they realize about us. It says, if it has genius behind it, such initiative can do more than can be done by millions of people among whom we have sown this goes on to say, we must so direct the education of the Goyim communities that whenever they come upon a matter 
requiring personal initiative, they may drop their hands in despairing impotence. See where they want us? They want, they want our they want our focus to be so gloomy. They want our ideas to seem so unreachable that we just drop our hands. In despairing, their words here are despairing impotence. Woo! Again, that's just one pro, another article. Y'all need to read this. Y'all need to make this your Bible for the next 30 days. Those of you who are watching, read this entire thing. Make this your thing for the next 30 days so you can see their agenda in place. Let's look at the next one. Can I continue, y'all? Yes. Protocol number nine. Protocol number nine, item number 10 under this protocol. Here's what it says. We have fooled, bemused, meaning we've confounded them, and corrupted the youth of the Goyim, hear this y'all, by rearing them in principles and theories which are known to us to be false. Although it is that they have been inculcated, meaning that the instruction that they've received have been so persistent and so constant that they believe what we told them to believe. Again, who did they target? The young people. Now again, y'all, this didn't just start in the last 10 years. This has been going on for several centuries. And it says, if you allow me to transliterate it, we have hoodwinked, bamboozled, brainwashed, and corrupted the young people by rearing them, putting them in academic systems, rearing them in principles and theories which we know are a lie. We know it's a lie because we made the lie up. That was the protocol on re-education. So those of you who are interested in education and seeing to it that our young people get right knowledge, right training as they come up, you really need to read that protocol. That was again protocol number nine. Let's jump to protocol 14. How many protocols did I tell y'all that were? 27 protocols. I promise, please, don't watch Empire this week. Just, 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 just don't watch it this week. I promise next week you will not have mixed much. It's already on. Oh, it is on. See, that goes shit. You know, I don't watch it. It's already on, right? Okay? Don't, don't watch if loving you is wrong. January 6th. Is that off too? Yeah, it's off. You, you, you got us the next well, one. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say, right? You got us for the next few months. <laughs> protocol 14, their protocol on religion. Let's start right there at item number one. Here's what they wrote. When we come into our kingdom, it will be undesirable for us that there should exist any other religion than ours. Of the one God with whom our destiny. Y'all hear this? Do y'all remember me teaching you about manifest destiny? That these people honestly believe that God has destined in the rule of the world? Remember me teaching you? Talk about this years ago. Let me start that again. When we come into our kingdom, it will be undesirable for us that there should exist any other religion than ours of the one God with whom our destiny is bound up by our position as the chosen people and for whom our 
same destiny is united with the destinies of the world. That's called manifest destiny. Yes, sir. It goes on to say, we must therefore sweep away all other forms of belief. Yeah. And you want to know why there's an attack on Islam? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It goes on to say, if this gives birth to atheists, whom we see today, it will not be only a transitional stage, interfere with our views, but will serve as a warning for those generations which will hearken to our preaching of the religion of Moses, that by its stable and thoroughly elaborated system has brought all the peoples of the world into subjection to us. Let me move on. Protocol 16. And again, I like, there's so many more points on each protocol. I'm just doing some excerpts here to kind of give you a bird's eye view of the system that's been put in place that what we're, what we're really warring against. I told you, family, we are at war. Yes, sir. Yes. But we don't realize it. Even some of us who are so-called conscious, simply because you're doing oath to the ancestors, you think you're all right. <laughs> I mean, that's why I wrote it the way I wrote it. Oh, ancestors, stand with us, strengthen us, guide us, teach us, and protect us from the snare of our enemies. When I wrote that, this is the kind of stuff I had in my mind. But what good is saying that if you don't know who your enemy is? <laughs> what good is saying protect us from the snare of our enemies, preachers, and then you meet with the enemy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. And then let, let them turn around and tell them how much you support. Yeah. Come on, man. Right. Yeah. Protocol 16. This is their protocol on brainwashing. And I'm going to just read point four. That's it. Then I'm going to go ahead and get ready to close this out. Point number four under Protocol 16 called brainwashing. Here's what it says. Classicism as also any form of study of ancient... I want y'all to hear this one real good. Classicism as also any form of study of ancient history in which there are more bad than good examples, check this out now, we shall replace with the study of the program of the future. Now this last sentence should be enough to make all of you say, you know what, I'm going to do something about this. Personally, I'm going to take personal witness and do something about this. Here this last statement in this one particular point of Protocol 16. Point number four. It goes on to say, we shall erase from the memory of men all facts of previous centuries which are undesirable to us. Oh, there he is. Yeah. There he is. Did y'all hear that? In other words, any information See, now you understand why they don't want you to go to Africa? Uh, understand why they don't want you to go to Egypt? Okay? Because they have not been able to erase all of the evidence that gives the world to know who the real people of God are. They're trying to erase it, though. The Arab government right now, as I speak to you, Okay, as I speak to you right now, they are making plans to destroy the pyramids if they can. Yes. Yeah. And remove the temples of our ancestors. Yes. Because they know that if there's no evidence, we don't have no argument. Brothers and sisters, from the moment that we're brought into this world, we are thrust into a structure that's been designed by those people who may be called the establishment yes. or the ruling elite. 
And you first, you, y'all need to come to grips with that reality. Okay? To those of you who are watching this DVD, who are, who are Christians and, and saints, mm. please understand, y'all ain't the ones in power. I know you think you are because y'all quote Bible verses. We'll take it by force. That, y'all been saying it for a long time. And ain't got nothing yet. You ain't taking nothing by force. You don't even know what force is. Force is, he, he, let me give you a definition of force. Force is when something is so strategically put in place that it creates the desired results without you even knowing it. Uh, wow. Did y'all hear how I said that? That's force. Force is when a device has been so strategically put in place for your demise that you engage in the activity of the strategy thinking it's doing something for your own good. That's force. That's power. In order to ensure that their control over the masses continues, and I'm sure you might have heard the phrase, the masses are asses. Have y'all ever heard that before? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not Ray Hagen's phrase. You can Google it and look it up. The masses are asses. In other words, the masses don't think. They don't think. They just follow the crowd. Yeah. Everybody, if, if what I'm about to say is true, then you repeat it after me. Here's my phrase I'm about to say. I am not a crowd follower. <laughs> Now, did you mean that? Are, are that? is that true, or did you just repeat what I said? <laughs> See, I've found out that most people are crowd followers. They engage in crowd activity and don't even really know why they're there. Except that this is where everybody's at. I'm in with the in crowd. I go where the in crowd goes. And see, we like to be a part of the crowd. Everybody repeat after me. The crowd is powerless. The crowd is powerless. They just told you in their minutes who has power, and that is individuals who take personal initiative to improve their condition. I could take all of you right now and walk down this street as a group and we'll have accomplished nothing. And folks will join. People are joining simply because it's a group walking down the street. Yes, they will. Y'all, it's, it's deep how this goes. I dare y'all, don't take my word for it. Go downtown or out in the mall, outside the mall or wherever, okay, and just stand there and look up like this. Yeah. And I promise, within five minutes, you're going to have about 30 folk them. Because <laughs> that's how we are. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I tell you. So in order to control, have control over the masses, be sure that it continues, they impose on us from childhood. From when? Childhood. <laughs> from childhood. Before you're even old enough to think for yourself. They impose upon us from childhood fears and phobias. Morality, religion. Yes. Now the purpose for imposing this stuff on us, okay, is to divide us within, placing invisible barriers in our psyche and on our emotions to control how we act and what we say through the use of culture. Yeah. Through the use of culture. So once we understand that we must destroy what's destroying us, it will give us a direction. Grab what I'm saying. The first thing you have to do here today, brothers and sisters, is understand. Understand that we Let's, let's, let's not even say we. Everybody say this. Say, I. I, I, must, destroy I must destroy what's destroying me. Destroying Until me. you say that, you can't even begin the process.
process. That's right. Mm -hmm. You understand? So once you understand that, that will automatically put you in the right direction to dismantle the device imposed upon us by the ruling classes. There has been no truer statement ever said than the, the statement is right there in the book of, I think it's, I think it's a, a, Malachi or whatever, my people are destroyed because they're ignorant. I don't care if there's lack of knowledge, but they're ignorant. Now, mind you, when I say ignorant, I don't mean stupid. Don't be offended. Okay? Ignorant simply means you don't know. That's why I hold up this circle when I teach. That's why I said you may know what you know about what you know, but that does not mean you know all there is to know about what you know. So be prepared to learn some more. Oh man. Y'all all right? I feel like I'm about to, I think I'm about, I feel like I'm about to launch here, man. Give me cover. We must dismantle the limitations imposed upon us. And I can't do it for you. Understand that, man. My job is to make you aware. That's all I can do. Because see, each of us has to dismantle the device for our powerlessness. So just like you have that job, I got that job, plus I got another job. And that is to educate you to what I'm talking about. And if I can get your eyes to open, oh my God, if I can get you to see the need to resurrect yourself, I can go to my grave a happy man. But that's what I came out of my mama's womb for. You see, it's this freedom, it's this liberation, man, that I'm trying to get y'all to. But in order to get you there, I must first dismantle the devices that's got you ignorant. I must first dismantle the devices that's got you blind. Those of you who are watching me right now on the internet, I must dismantle the devices that got you mentally enslaved. So don't get angry with me because I'm tearing down the lie you've been living by. Right. Yes. One person said it this way, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm only trying to set you free. But see, what happens is we love the lie. Oh, yeah. The lie makes us feel good. Mm. Yeah. Like liquor. We love the lie. We get joy mm. when we think about the lie. And we sing it. Mm -hmm. I get joy when I think about what he done for me. Unless you're talking about your husband, <laughs> you don't need me singing that. <laughs> That's okay to get joy when you think about what your man did for you. <laughs> We got men, understand the subliminal thing here. We got brothers singing about a fabricated figure of the Roman Catholic Church talking about, he's sweet, I know. <laughs> Y'all understand the subliminal effect of that? A man singing about another man? He's sweet. We don't think. We don't think. Man, what the hell are you singing about another man for? <laughs> He's that kind of friend. You want to know why the spirit of homosexuality permeates our ranks so much? It permeates us because we're singing that stuff. <laughs> A man singing, can nobody do me like Jesus? <laughs> Ain't nobody to be like the Lord. <laughs> and it's deep because we did. I did it growing up. They taught me to do that as a, as a little boy. You ever know what I'm saying? Yeah. He touched.
touched me. Oh. A man singing about another man. Oh, he touched me. Then we can add all the joy that floods my soul. Something Now I know he touched me. Brothers, you don't need to be singing that. You see, these barriers have been put in us. These programs have been put in our minds. Requires the exploitation of our minds in order for them to function. Because if you think all you got to do is think. Yes. Yes. When you think, it's like waking up from a dream. Mm -hmm. right, right. If you just think about it a little bit, and you wake up and say, man, shoot, I've been, I've been participating in this program all this time. Mm -hmm. When my eyes came open, y'all, oh. Mm -hmm. But now let me share this with you, for those who are watching. During your awakening process, I want to close on this note. During your awakening process, once you find out you've been lied to, don't throw everything away. Take it from me. Let me share some experience with you. Once I saw that I had been lied to, once I saw that I had preached a lie for 25 plus years, I got so angry that I didn't want to hear anything about that are connected to it. If I was riding down the street and a song came on the radio and the word Jesus was in, I'd turn my radio on. Because I had threw everything out. And then I found myself empty. Uh, okay? So those of you who are watching, let me give you this analogy that I hope you will adopt and live by. As you are awakening, as your eyes are coming open, See yourself as a glass of Kool-Aid, and the Kool-Aid is the lie that you've been believing all these years. Don't pour the Kool-Aid out because then your glass will be empty. Rather, take your glass of Kool-Aid and go to the faucet of truth. Turn on the water of truth and just hold your glass of Kool-Aid under that steady stream of water. And you'll find that as the truth, the more truth you learn, mm -hmm. the more the lie will dilute. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense, people? Yeah. And as the, as the lie dilutes and dilutes and dilutes and dilutes, after a while, you'll be walking straight. You'll be clear. You'll be focused. Because you're now walking in the truth of my act. Yeah. Truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, reciprocity. So family, wake up, get it together, yeah. enhance your personal initiative. Yeah. Make it your personal mission to get on the right track. Learn what you need to learn so that you don't fall prey to the devices that's been put in place. Once you learn to identify a trap, you can walk around it. Yeah. But if the trap looks good, if the trap looks like it's going to bless you and you walk into it and you get stuck in that trap, then you're going to be there and only a miracle of God will get you out of it. I am so glad that the miracle of God reached down and rescued this brother from where I was. And I pray that the truth will do the same for you. Amen. Oh, Amen. To the one true and living God who is the creator and sustainer of all life, we give you honor and glory today. I thank you so much for rescuing me from 
where I was. But I thank you even more for finding it fit to choose and anoint and appoint me to take this message to your people. It is such an honor. It is also an honor to have brothers and sisters here to listen to the message and become teachers themselves. And not be a part of a group who's looking for a leader. But to be an individual who's looking for a teacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anoint and appoint each one of us to reach somebody that we're connected to in our family, on the job. Make us a living testimony of the power of the truth of being set free. And we'll honor and glorify you for the rest of our lives. Our shame, our shame, and our man. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to do something today that we have not done in a while. But I'm starting it again today. Oh boy. Uh, we got great work to do here. And we need soldiers and warriors to help us do that work. So I'm asking, is there someone here today who would like to be a part of this assignment? You're not a member of the African village. You want, I'm sorry, for our audience, internet audience. Those of you out there, and if you want to be a part of this movement, uh, go to theafricanvillage.org. That's our website, theafricanvillage.org. That's African with a K. All right, and fill out the membership form there online, okay, so that we can properly build, equip, and prepare this army for African liberation. We need to know who you are. Okay, so go to theafricanvillage.org, fill out the membership registration form there, all right, and we'll communicate with you and get you involved in our program wherever you are. Okay, that's what we're trying to do uh, to enhance this work. All right, and also take a moment and share your gifts with us, your finances to help us with our expenses. To do that, you go to PayPal. Our PayPal address is... Uh, African Village 1. African Village, African with a K, African Village number 1 at paypal.com. Go there right now, okay, and send in a donation to help us with our work. Whether it's $25, $10, $50, $100, whatever the creator lays on your heart. Help us to get this message of Afri African liberation to the world. All right, come on and do your part, all right? You sat here today and learned, okay? Don't walk away without saying thank you in a monetary way. So help us there. We love you guys out there. Thank you for watching. Let's give our internet audience a hand, everybody.